ಆಗಿವೆಯಾ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆಗಳು ಕ್ರಾನಿ ಆಗಬೇಡಿ ಯಾವತ್ತು ಪ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ ಇದು ನಮ್ಮ ಕುಡ್ಲ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿನಿಕ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿದೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಪರಿಣಿತರ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಟಾನಿಕ್ ನಾನು ಸಿ ಎ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ನಾಯ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಓಪನಿಂಗ್ ಎಂಟ್ರಿ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಆಲ್ ದ ಶೋ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಕಂಗ್ರಾಚುಲೇಟ್ ಸೈನ್ ಎಲೋಸಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಅಟೋನೋಮಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಇನ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ವಿತ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಲಂಡನ್ ಎಲಿಮಿನಿ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಟಿ ಹೈದರಾಬಾದ್ for conducting this wonderful program called 48 hours startup challenge on behalf of entire entrepreneurship entrepreneurship fraternity i congratulate reverend father dr pravin marti principal of saint eloisius college autonomous for conducting this wonderful workshop sir so you are ably supported by dr alvin dasa rotarian dr alvin dasa registrar saint eloisius college and very successful entrepreneur from not only from mangalore we can say from karnataka state and founder of cii chapter mangalore none other than shri kalbavi prakash rao my friend well wisher guide and mentor for me and uh, <laughs> shri adarsh gowda entrepreneurship cell he is the dean of entrepreneurship cell and uh, shri stephen anurag president kings college london elimini <coughs> hyderabad and all my dear aspiring entrepreneurs good morning to everyone the theme of this program is green skills for youth recently we have celebrated from august 1st to august 6th international youth day <coughs> so i congratulate all the youth for participating in nation building this week on sunday our program is role of youth in building healthy nation that is the program we are going to conduct in this tv show also we have been learning lot of things day to day not only in colleges even outside also there is a saying in subhashit a beautiful saying how to learn we should learn in four quarters acharyat padam adatte padam shishyah somedaya padam sabrahma charibhyah padam alakramena cha the meaning acharya padam adatte 1/4 or 25% we should learn from gurus we can learn in colleges padam shishya samedaya in college there is a place called library many people have forgotten now library but still there is a place called library there whatever taught in the classroom you can improvise in that classroom how to learn shravanam mananam nididhyasanam if you do that sakshat karam anything you can understand second step is you should understand whatever you have heard in the classroom third thing is padam sabrahma charibhya that means you should discuss debate and you should improvise so there is a platform in we should appreciate that all of you are studying in a great uh, institution called eloses eloses college not only teaches curriculum they always teach all how to conduct yourself that is the main teaching which is lacking in many institutions so padam kalakramena cha remaining one fourth 
you can learn jivana patha that is day to day that is experience is the greatest teacher practice makes a person perfect so now the problem with people is we mug up they give lot of marks 90 100 out of 100 lot of you are seeing thanks but we should understand what we have studied as i already told shravanam mananam nididhyasanam then only you can make sakshatkara so the main problem nowadays is unemployment why there is unemployment why there is underemployment according to me there is no unemployment at all mankutimma says ಏನಾನಂಬಾಡು ಕೈಗೆ ದೊರಕುಜ್ಜುಗವ ನಾನೇನು ಹುಲುಕಡ್ಡಿ ಎನಬೇಡ ಹೀನವಾವುದುವಿಲ್ಲ ಜಗದ ಊಳಿಗದಲ್ಲಿ ತಾಣ ನಿನಗಿವುದಿಲ್ಲಿ ಮಂಕುತಿಮ್ಮ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಎಸ್ಪೈರ್ ದಟ್ ಎಟ್ ಎ ಟೈಮ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಟೆಂತ್ ಫ್ಲೋರ್ ಆರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಫ್ಲೋರ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಗೋ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ ಬೈ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಕ್ಲೈಮ್ ದ ಲ್ಯಾಡರ್ brick by brick any empire cannot be built overnight it should be built brick by brick so entrepreneurship is the solution for the unemployment how to inculcate this entrepreneurship we have seen mangalore was very famous for cashews now also very famous for cashews mangalore tiles fish and fishery products many more other family business enterprises but now these family business enterprises they are diminishing day by day children they are studying they are studying making post graduation doctorate chartered accountancy many more then they try to work abroad they are not bothered about our uh, ancestral business to carry forward here there are plethora of opportunities which we should any cash the brain behind this program dean of entrepreneurship cell prakash deshkavra all you budding entrepreneurs i should say right away because you have taken this challenge 48 hours challenge i call you entrepreneurs already we saw the innovations right from the world go that welcome dance that we saw was not the traditional dance it was a very innovative thing that is all that this startup is and i am sure i have very little to speak today actually after our chief guest ss nayak tonic which is not just woken you from on on the on the thoughts and the spirits that he has given to you about the startups but the wonderful message that he had in his uh, uh, chief guest remarks on why to be a startup why to be entrepreneurs and how to be one he is an amazing though he is a chartered accountant i still call him as an entrepreneur because the kind of work he has done with the msmes supporting them and the business tonic program that is saying it's, a, it's literally a startup the program itself is one uh, it gives us so much of lessons to learn from so today when i talk about startup i think it's a remarkable journey that india has embarked upon from probably 2016 these uh, the startups is what we heard so first word that we are all hearing you know a spark of innovation ignite a flame that has grown to a fire of opportunity so india in 2018 recognized the need to support this startup climate and initiated the startup india which has done incredibly well for all of us and uh, fast forward into 2023 now we find ourselves amidst an extraordinary evolution where india is now risen to the third fastest growing and the 
largest ecosystems for the startups globally. This is an era for change for sure. The transformation of the new generation from job seekers to job producers or providers. So the number of startups that have come up in the last few years speaks volumes about you know, what this ecosystem is. 2016 I started, 2017, 18 we saw a few hundreds. But 2023, as I have speak to you, I believe there is more than 100,000 startups in this country. I do not want to get into the investment mode, but that's a controversy by itself. But 100,000 startups now and growing like never before. So this meteoric rise over the past four years, it actually underscores, you know, the immense growth potential that lies without, within our nation's entrepreneurial spirit. It's not just about the numbers, as I mentioned, but it's about what these startups represent, what you all, if you are a startup tomorrow, represent. It is actually the spirit of innovation, resilience, and the determination that defines the entrepreneurship itself. So to remind us that every great endeavor begins with an idea fueled by passion and driven by willingness to take risks. So these are the three things that are absolutely necessary for all of us. An idea and then be very passionate about it and then you know jump into it and take the necessary risks. So the journey of a startup is not a solitaire one. It's a collaborative effort that brings, to, brings together diverse minds, talents, skills to create something that is truly transformative. So I mentioned about these 99,000 startups that are, or, you know, 100,000 startups by now that are already there. Believe me, 90% of them are failures. Only 10% of them really make it. We'll get into it as to why it is a failure, but the fact here is, in spite of this, the number of individuals that are drawn to this pursuit is really inspiring. We know that it is not all startups are successful, but yet the number of people who are getting drawn into startups is very, very inspiring for this. And I'm sure going forward, we will understand why we fail. There could be multiple reasons. Lack of research, wrong marketing strategies, you know, wrong business models where probably all of us think looking at the looking at those success unicorns, we looking at them and thinking that we will become rich overnight. So these are all misguided thoughts that probably you know get you into the wrong path. But uh, however disheartening these are, I think we have to learn from these failures too. That they teach us that success demands meticulous preparation, continuous adoption, and unwavering perseverance. So as we stand at the crossroads of the possibility, it is essential for each one of us to recognize the significance of this startup movement. Startups are not just economic engines, they are vehicles of change, engines of job creation, and catalysts for technological advancements, and they challenge the status quo. They question the conventional wisdom and disrupt industries. How many success stories, how many brilliant ideas all of you must have heard over the last four to five years. The business models that I mentioned, see, I'm a 1987 batch entrepreneur. I'm an alumnus, as we mentioned, from this very college. I'm seeing the change. This college has given me immense confidence and that's the reason in 1985 I passed out. In 1987 I set up my own establishment and industry. I knew nothing. There was no startup ecosystem at that point of time. I am not a millionaire or a billionaire as many of these startups who are now with those ideas. You need now what? You need now an idea which is scalable. You need technology that can scale your operations to any level. So you have people who will come, venture capitalists or 
you know, private equity players or anybody who are willing to invest in you. Then I started in 1987, getting even a lack of rupees was a challenge for us because banks weren't that friendly as they are today. That was a different story. India was going through a different economy then. And today, you know what Indian economy is, I'm not going to lecture you on that. There is abundance of money, abundance of funds. It's just that we need a brilliant idea that is scalable. And that can take you through. It can, it's a social reforms, uh, SS Nayak mentioned, you know, about how even the garbage, you know, we can utilize it and, you know, we can create a startup. Mm -hmm. so what for? I got a very, like, 10% of yeses and 90% uh, of uh, neutral. All right. Uh, uh, let me quote from uh, uh, Ronald Reagan, the former president of the United States. I think it's, uh, for me it was a little funny, I don't know how you're going to take it. So, he mentioned the nine strongest words of wisdom are, I am from the government and I am and I'm here to help you. I think he's saying the other way around. Instead of wisdom, he meant it in a funny manner. So, I'm not representing a government agency here. So, um, I'm on my private visit, uh, of course, representing my King's College London alumni community. And uh, before I begin my two-minute talk, let me thank uh, the principal of this uh, esteemed institution, Father Praveen, uh, Reverend Father Praveen, for, for this opportunity and uh, Dr. Adarsh Gauda and all other dignitaries including the registrar and uh, Michelle Padusiza who has been there every day, you know, coordinating with us uh, from across the other uh, alumni members across the globe. So, and of course the student organizers uh, led by Rohan and uh, other people. Thank you all for this uh, wonderful coordination. Uh, I'm not taking your vote of time speech, sir. Yeah. All right. So, uh, interestingly, the 48 hours, as the other speakers were mentioning, it is tightly packed. I was part of the Startup 20. I was, I was wondering if anyone would mention about it. So, Startup 20 is, has been an official engagement of the G20. How many of, of you are aware of the G20 here? Gosh, G20 is a group of 20 nations and uh, India is the presidency for this year and we are proud to host it. I think even Mangalore had one of the sessions uh, lately and uh, Mysore has one recently. And I met someone from Aloysius College uh, in Delhi while I was attending one of the seminars. So it's quite interesting to see you know, the students from these minority institutions having such kind of an exposure. It's, uh, it's to do with the leadership of the college and, and also the interest of the students. So this year, the theme of uh, uh, the inter International uh, Youth Day is very much uh, in align with the Startup 20 G20 theme, which is about green skilling. So we all talk about climate change. We all talk about uh, changing environments, changing psychologies, changing business. But what is the root cause uh, to all of these issues? What are the prospective solutions? And is there anything beyond climate change issue? Or is there something beyond the solutions that we are already being thought about? So these are the major concepts that we would be uh, advocating to these 48 hours of sessions which we'd be having online from, from uh, the alumni members abroad and India. But uh, my, this question is to the participants who would be engaged uh, in the two-day sessions from today is you'll have to come with a question, a big question in your mind when you join the first session which will come in the next 20-25 minutes is what is that I would gonna benefit out of this 48 hours? Time is of the essence. So why am I here all the way from Meghalaya? I mean, 48 hours, it's like a huge a time for me in the government. I mean, I have to sit back there drafting policies for the Honorable Chief Minister and the departments there. So I mean, why should I be here? So there's a big question mark with me. And uh, your active engagement, I'm not talking about success here, I'm talking about your active engagement would really give an answer to my question, why am I here for 48 hours? You all will be having the same question, maybe. Why or what would I get from this 48 hours in the next few days? 
And let me assure you from our end, from the organizers end, that we are doing our best to ensure that you would be equipped with the, with, with the basics, uh, digital, uh, technical and even market research skills. Not just theory, even practices. So I would like to bring you to the notice of uh, our chief guest uh, for today, Mr. Naik, and uh, the guest of honor, Mr. Prakash Rauji, that uh, the participants will also be engaged in real-time market exposure. So we would be tomorrow. We will be sending out you know, to the to the feed to the to the real mac, uh, market to have an exposure. And by the end of tomorrow, where my my best friend, my classmate, and a very senior IAS officer, uh, Hasa Hemina uh, Ji, you know, he, he he would be ideally assessing all our uh, the, the startup challenger ideas, the, the the pitches. So and three of them would be selected. Uh, the chief guest of today's 48 hours startup challenge, Sri Kalbavi Prakash Rao, the illustrious alumnus of St. Elvish's College and the owner of Kalbavi Cashew Industries, Sri Stephen Anurag, the president of King's College Alumni Association. Dr. Adash Gowda, the convener, Dr. Alvin Desa, the registrar, my dear directors, members of the faculty, and my dear students, and those who are already into some kind of a startup challenge, and you are going to see this today. And this is going to be one of its kind that we organized with the help of Sri Stephen Anurag the president of King's College Association, Alumni Association. And we are all working together to see that you all get the best of opportunities. Our chief guest, Sri S.S. Nayak, beautifully put it across through his humorous ways how these two things are very different, employee and entrepreneur. And uh, also Sri Prakash also told us we should be differentiating between the job seekers and job providers. How are we going to reduce this kind of a thing that we have in front of us today? And that's why we need more and more entrepreneurs who are risk takers. There's so much of opportunities in the world. How do you use those opportunities to give some of the jobs to the others? How you become job creators? That is important. Those who are job creators, they break the walls of normalcy, they break the walls of predictability, they break the, break the walls of tradition. They think beyond and they also experiment. The Jeff Bezos, the founder of uh, the Facebook, mentioned that experiments are the first step of innovation. And you may fail, but then we continue to experiment and experiment and that's how we come up with some kind of an innovative product. They say innovation is equivalent to creativity plus the execution plus the profit. And there are unicorns, but then today there are decacorns and others who are many, many people are coming forward. That's a sign that we need to come up with new ideas. And these ideas can come out from the students. The students or the youth are the ones who think differently. The disruptive ideas only come, come from you. 